G'day everyone, my name is Chris and in this video I'm going to be covering the MG ZS EV and well its range and its efficiency. So I'm going to do a big massive trip which you can see right here and I'm going to be driving it normally. I'm not going to do anything special about you know slipstreaming, uh, drafting, econo mode, nothing like that. I have regen on level 3, I'm going to have aircon on, I'm going to have tunes on. And uh, well, yeah, this next two and a half hours, <laughs> not the length of this video, mind you, is going to be exploration of its, this car's uh, range and ability to be able to actually do, well, a bit of a big drive. So let's get going. I've just picked up my son David, so thanks David for holding the camera for me. And um, a thing you should note about, well, electric vehicles, range, and more particularly the ZS EV, and that is that temperature is very important and the type of driving you're doing is important. So it's awesome today for this test because you know what? It's actually um, 21, 22 degrees, and that's kind of like in a bit of the Godelox area. 25 would be even better. But for me doing this test, 21 is great because you know what? I don't need to have the air con on. I'm just gonna let the um, the air just actually come in. So I can feel a bit of cool air coming into the cabin right now from outside, uh, which is brilliant. So I won't have to waste any energy running the HVAC system. So watch what happens when, look, I've got the car in normal mode now. And when I turn the HVAC system on, see what happened just then? Basically the kilometers dropped. And well, that's the car taking into consideration that to run the air conditioner or the heater and the fan, the car's going to have to actually supply this amount of electricity, therefore kilometers, to actually keep those systems going. So when someone asks me, oh, Chris, tell us about your EV. How far can it go? That's a very, very typical question any EV owner will get. And I'll say to them quite genuinely that this car can get highway driving 260 kilometers without their conditioner on, <laughs> okay? And that would mean running at 100 kilometers per hour, accelerating um, crazy fun because, well, in EVs, it's, uh, you know, you can go fast pretty quick. Um, and well, yeah, that's kind of real world range. But then I might caveat that and then say, oh, but you know what? If I actually put the air con on, I, this car can only do 230 kilometers on one charge. And that's that's pretty good range, honestly. Like remembering Australia, we on average only do about 11,000 kilometers per year or around about 30 to 40 kilometers per day. That's for private vehicle use. So people don't need to do 230 kilometer drives every day. Well, well some people do, but I certainly don't. This car is just my run around car for the family, for me getting to and from work. And I genuinely only do about 10 kilometers per day. So I can recharge this car in one hour from a standard 240 outlet anywhere in Australia, of which there are a million places I can fuel this car up with electricity. Okay, so another thing that I want to talk about, particularly with the MG ZS EV, is well, range and using its radar cruise control. Now, I'll do a separate video like on the um, uh, MG Pilot Assist uh, and also the radar cruise control. And look, just little takeaways for the moment. It's actually very good at following. Um, if I change lanes or another car cuts in front of me and changes lanes, it doesn't overreact like some systems I've driven. Uh, pretty good that way. If someone turns left off a like a quiet side street, it, 
it does put the brakes on a bit aggressively. Um, no fat in braking otherwise. But I digress. The radar cruise control in this car, in terms of range, is not a good thing. It actually, instead of actually using the regen braking to put electricity back into the battery when you slow down, it will actually use the brakes. And that is a bad thing. Like, it's just a waste of energy. You're losing all that electricity you put into getting the car forwards into heat and wear and tear on your brake pads. You can see here the power gauge, that's the amount of um, you know, power consumption that the uh, motor needs to use to actually, or the battery or the combo, the combo of those two need to use to get this car moving forwards. All right, so when I accelerate, this is what happens if I do it rather aggressively. And well, when I take my foot off the accelerator, this is what happens, okay? So it it's extremely, I think, like why why can't they with the radar cruise control that if the car in front of me actually slows down and this car slows down to match why don't they just allow the actual electric motor the resistance is built into them uh, take that and actually take the electricity back into the motor uh, battery oh my gosh mixing terms here but you get the idea it's um yeah not the best and uh i do hope with a future software update they can fix it um, but right now, if I wanted to get the most range from this car, I actually wouldn't use a radar cruise control at all. All right, we've arrived in Geelong and we're basically more than halfway there. Uh, so far, um, we've done 16.4 kilowatt hours per 100 k. So it's, um, it's one of the better numbers I've had. And look, I've done a mixture of, um, uh, you know, highway driving, freeway driving, a little bit of urban driving, more at the start there, but not of late. There was also some roadworks, but neither here nor there. Um, so 127 kilometers. And remember we departed like with 260 ish kilometers of range um, to say that we're actually at about 130 or a bit less um, it's actually working out pretty accurately so that's amazing isn't it so all right reason for the trip was to actually go not only do this test but also go get some mats so let's go get them now and um, yeah get back home Oh, right, damn it. That was annoying. I really tried to make those mats work, but I think they were designed for the ZS internal combustion engine version, not the EV version. The floor pan in this is different to the MG ZS, and I believe it's more like in the T, but there's basically, there's no thing down there, you know, like tunnel. And the, um, anyway, you get the idea. Um, so, <laughs> Definitely frustrating, annoying. Um, MG said that they will uh, sort it out and send them out to me to my house. I don't have to drive all the way down here again to do that. Uh, so, okay, all right. I'll get home now and I'll do a bit of a wrap up as to what the final outcome was because, well, you know, this battery button basically is a useless, useless button that um, they should actually have as a toggle that it tells you how much range you got, uh, what your consumption is, what the percentage of the battery charge is, um, just stuff around the battery. Um, it's the most stupidest button in this whole damn car. Um, so yeah enough complaining let's get home and uh, see what the final numbers come out to be
back in the studio now, and so I'm about to run through the numbers, and I'll be discussing the uh, what the efficiency was, how much range um, the car can actually do, and um, what you can expect to pay. Because you know what, I'm getting asked more and more these days. You know, when people learn that I've got an EV, they go, "Whoa, your electricity costs must go up." And I'm like, "Yeah, but I've got no fuel costs now." <laughs> and uh, people still think, "But yeah." Electricity, it's so expensive, right? And well, let's just start off with this, okay? Now, if I actually did this same journey, 204 kilometers, and I actually filled up a car with petrol, and that car did 7.5 liters per 100 kilometers, that would actually cost me $23.70, okay? So I think what's going on here is there's a bit of a, um, a a mismatch around people just forget that they fill up the car once a week, once a fortnight, they spend 50, 60, 70, 80 bucks at least on petrol, and then they drive five, six hundred kilometers or so. Not realizing that when they do a trip like this, you know, that is uh, dropping off, picking up kids, um, going down somewhere, doing, you know, lots of busy, busy stuff. There's like a total of three hours and a bit of driving today um, and 204 kilometers. They, they kind of forget that they're actually consuming that fuel and burning the stuff and burning money, yeah? So $23.70. And then what do you think the cost would be if I actually paid for it with electricity from this house? Remembering that I've got solar and batteries. So, so far I've only spent like a dollar something on electricity cost to fill that car. Everything else has been free. <laughs> hey, hashtag solar for the whim. It would have cost me $8.79 and that's at a 22 cent kilowatt hour um, uh, tariff, which is not what I normally pay. I pay uh, typically 14 to 16 cents. Um, and with a $1.20 theoretical daily access charge, yeah, $8.79 versus $23.70. It's, it's less than half the price. In fact, that's almost like a third of the price. It is, it really is, especially if I use my normal tariff. And then finally, for those who actually don't have access to like um, a plug that they can charge their EV into, think about city dwellers, apartment dwellers. Um, if you actually went to like ChargeFox and use one of the um, slower DC fast chargers, which still will actually get, um, fill this thing up in about 30 to 40 minutes, it would have cost me only $13.81. And that's on a 40 cent kilowatt hour um, energy price. And um, total amount of energy that went into the car for this whole trip, by the way, was 34.5 kilowatt hours. So isn't that fascinating that the, you know, paying for, you know, a service station style electricity thing, you know, from a private company would have um, still been a lot cheaper by 10 bucks compared to using petrol. All right, so let's run through the numbers, shall we? State of charge at the very start of the journey was 97%. At the very end, um, even though you can see on here, it's like, um, it says 20%, it's actually 19.4%, and that's just with a little bit of math. So the total amount of battery that was used for this trip was 77.6%, and as I said earlier, 35 point, excuse me, 34.5 kilowatt hours of energy. What we then do is we can do a few little equations to see what the actual theoretical maximum range of this car is, what the typical range is, and some of the things to think about when you're driving and how to get the most out of your battery. So using what I like to call the total battery range using the like kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer method, what you do is you take the, um, the battery pack size, which we know to be 44.5 kilowatt hours, and you then actually uh, put in what the car tells you is the kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. All right, so in this case, for this whole trip, the entire trip, not just the little segments, but the actual average that the car gave me at the very end was 16. So divide one into the other and you get 278 kilometers. That's very good. That's more than the standard WLTP range. And remembering, I'm doing freeway highway driving here mainly with very little urban driving. So for such a large vehicle, that's not aerodynamic. It's drag coefficient, whatever that number is, is probably pretty damn terrible, especially compared to like a Tesla. That's, that's an amazing result. Um, using them, let's do another equation, because that's not a good realistic number, I think. It's, it's, not, it's not, and I'll explain why soon. 
total battery range using the kilometer method, okay? So you take your kilometers and you divide that by the amount of percentage that your battery use. So in this case, 204 kilometers, 77.6, and that gives you, guess what? 263 kilometers, which is bang on what they recommend this car can do. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's blown my mind. And it, it for such a large vehicle, it's 1500 kilograms, I think they've got the motor, the efficiency of that motor is is bang on. It's, it's very good. I, if I think they um, had a larger battery with that same motor, this car would not perform very well at all. Uh, so yeah, that's that's damn impressive. And then finally, uh, we can actually find the actual battery size. And in this case, that is um, basically you take the energy used for your trip, so 34.5, and divide that by the percentage of the battery used, and that's 77.6, and you get 44.5. So um, there you go, That's it's working out really well. Tips, I reckon, to help you make this journey um, better, safer, longer, <laughs> and get the most out of your battery. Uh, yeah, as I said earlier, if you want to get the best range from the car, don't use the active cruise control. That radar system, it breaks the car instead of actually getting the energy back into the battery regen, just don't use it. But I myself, I would much rather just allow the car to speed up and slow down to um, my maximum speed. Um, so I didn't do that in this trip. No, I did not. But what I did do was again, still didn't use the HVAC. I used it for about 10, 15 minutes on occasion when the cabin was getting a bit too warm. Um, I found opening, um, I had the, the uh, what do you call it? The sunroof cranked just, you know, they, you can tilt it instead of actually opening it. There's two ways you can open that thing. So I had it for the entire journey, uh, tips like that. And to actually help get the air into the car, sometimes I would actually put the windows down and you'd really feel the air coming through those vents, just passively. So you're not using the HVAC because using the HVAC in the system really had a big, big cost. And I'll be, I'll, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Next thing I would suggest is, yeah, use that, um, you know, the shade visor thing. Um, it was a middle of the day trip. It was only 21, 22 degrees up to about 26 degrees. And uh, that's a great temperature in which to test any car. And um, yeah, that's an obvious tip, obviously, because you've got to keep the interior cool, so you have to use the aircon. But when you do use a HVAC and the aircon or heater, what it does is it actually reduces your range by about 15%. So I've calculated this for both like eco, normal and sport. And as you can see here, um, if we have got a car that's almost fully charged um, on eco mode, it says we've got 261 kilometers, but then I put the HVAC system on and that drops to 222 kilometers. And this is the thing I'm seeing more and more in the forums is that people will get into their car and when they turn it on, it always defaults to normal mode. And they're like, what's up in my range? It says I've only got 249 kilometers, but I've done a level charge. That is to say they've left, they've fully charged hundred percent and left it for several more hours to try and level the cells out. And I'm not getting the stated 263 kilometers WLTP. And that's because it starts in normal mode. And normal mode is actually um, about what? Uh, 12 kilometers less than the eco mode. So just one, turn your HVAC off, two, put the eco mode on, and voila, you're gonna get your maximum range for that car. So yeah, top tips, don't use the um, ACC, don't use a HVAC system, think about drafting behind cars, let regen do its job, use eco mode, be gentle on the accelerator, and yeah, you'll get absolutely, you will absolutely get 263 kilometers out of this car on a highway drive, which is mighty impressive. So some very surprising results, and um, I hope you, you've, um, you know, maybe learned something here. Uh, if not, <laughs> it, it's, it's been a, an educational video for me. And um, if you've enjoyed it, consider subscribing. It would really help the channel. Uh, join us over here on Patreon where you get early access, news, polls, stuff you just don't get on this uh, channel. And um, yeah, look, be good, be green.